Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise, Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of Glory. Amen. Jesus is on the throne, friends, ruling and reigning opening hearts and enlightening eyes, and I trust that you are feeling blessed this morning. Well, today is October the 27th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, if you will allow me and bear with me because I feel a little bit overwhelmed today, we are at a midpoint in our teaching in the life of Job. And what I mean by that is that in chapter 24, Job is simply rehashing, restating a lot of the things that he has said. In chapter 25, Bildad responds with much of the same argument that he has already presented. And in chapter 26, Job is going to begin his last statement. And this is going to carry us to chapter 32. But in Job's last statement, carried through these four chapters, there are a couple things that I would like to point out. First of all, in chapter 27, Job says, As God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment, and the Almighty who has vexed my soul, all the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. And so through all of Job's pain, all of his suffering that has come from every possible side, Job still remains faithful in his relationship, his allegiance, and his understanding of who he is and who God is. For instance, in chapter 25, Bildad makes the statement, how much less is man, man that is a worm, and the son of man, which is a worm. Now, we often like to see ourselves in a greater light than this, but in our relationship with God, that's exactly what we are, friends, in our understanding of who God is. We are worms. And what is meant by this is the same relationship that man to a worm. If a worm of the earth could speak, his level of understanding and knowledge to that that man has today with all the technology and all the comprehensions of the things of this earth, man's knowledge would far outweigh that of a worm. And so it is with man to our relationship to God. And that's what's being pointed out here. And that is what is so important in our relationship with God, in our journey with God. We must understand who we are as men, how futile we are, how empty we are, how powerless we are, and how much we lack in knowledge and wisdom. And that's where Job moves next in chapter 28, beginning at verse 12. He says, where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man doesn't know the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. He says in verse 15, Wisdom cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. In verse 23, he says, But God understands the way thereof, and he knows the place thereof. And so if man is to find wisdom, where can it be found? Well, in verse 28, it says, Unto man the Almighty says, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. The reverence of the Lord, that is wisdom. And man can only reverence God, the Almighty, when he understands his position as a worm. All that we have, all that we need, all that we desire comes from the Almighty. And without him, we are nothing. And oh, that men should learn that. No fame, no fortune, no power, no success, no reputation can earn the wisdom of God. Only the bowed knee before the Almighty, a surrendered heart, can open us up to the blessing that wisdom brings. You see, it's all about our perception, friends, 
not thinking highly of ourselves, but thinking low of ourselves. And so again, we see the great paradox in spiritual understanding. In this world, in order to be highly esteemed among men, we must advance in knowledge. We must advance in power, in success, in fame, and in fortune. But as Jesus told us, what is highly esteemed among men in the book of Luke is abominable to God. And so what is highly esteemed before God is a bowed heart, a humble position before the Almighty. And so again, as we are told in verse 28 of chapter 28, the fear of the Lord, the reverence of the Lord, the understanding of man's position and God's supreme authority, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. And that's why Job, considering himself a man of wisdom, in chapter 31, verse 7 says, If my step has turned out of the way, if I no longer walk on the straight and narrow, if mine heart has walked after mine own eyes, if any blot has cleaved to my hands, then let me suffer at the hand of God. But I know the position of my heart, says Job. I see myself in a very lowered position, and I see the king of the armies of heaven, high and exalted, lifted up above all others. And so Job remains faithful in his position. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. For I know that my Redeemer liveth and shall stand upon the earth in the latter day. And all the suffering that we endure is only to prepare us for all the glory that is to come. And so as with Job, friends, the stand, the position of our heart that we are to take, as Job said from the very beginning, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. In all things, blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. Well, these are the end of the words of Job, friends, as told to us through the book of Job. Next, we're going to hear from Elihu, a young man who we've not heard from as of yet, who has remained silent due to the fact of his youth before these wise old men. And yet we're going to see much wisdom come from the lips of this young man, which teaches us that we should all be learning from everyone we come across, regardless of their age. Well, that's going to bring us to an end of our time together this morning, friends. I pray that you are gaining many insights from the life of Job and that it's both changing you and assisting you in your journey as you seek to walk faithful before the Lord Jesus each and every day. Now, may your journey be blessed today, friends. May your life be full of joy and peace. And as he, the Most High, wills, and until tomorrow, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.